SMSLSA 50, 50 watts per channel. A, you know, 70 bucks, roughly. Emotiva A100 Mini X, 50 watts per channel. Currently 197.10, roughly 220 when it's on sale. Now, so that's 50 watts per channel, and this is 50 watts per channel. So why is there such a discrepancy in size? Well, because this is a class D or class T amp, and this is a purebred AB monster. Now, I recommended these. I still recommend these. But don't consider it a 50 watt per channel amp. No, no, no. You see, because digital amplifiers, when you push them past a certain happy spot, distort like a mofo. They're super clean, up to like 20, like a 50 watt per channel, 20, 25, maybe even 30. Super clean. You go past that, and they start to lose their minds. Uh, but a standard good amplifier, standard old school amplifier, uh, will push cleanly to its limits. Now, there's a slight uh, weight difference between the two, and that's mostly due to the internals, which I can get a nice picture up here. Oh, you suck. Yes. Yes. That's actually too big. There you go. So, we've got, back here is the heat sink, because where TMs don't get hot, class A, B amps do. So you got a heat sink with a fan that only comes on if it gets hot enough, and it really hasn't, I was using it for like an hour and a half the other day, powering my JBLs, and it just wasn't, it wasn't getting hot enough to turn the amp, turn the fan on, and if the fan did turn on, it was super quiet. We've got this monstrous tortial right here. It's like, I don't know if it's four inches across, but it's certainly a, a huge monster. And then you got some pretty big caps right there. So, just like when I reviewed the A500, these are the bits that make it go, and they make it go better than most of these. Now, power supply on this is a separate output over there, 24 volt. So, you're dealing with a brick. This whole section is power supply. And that's what matters. I mean, I hooked this thing up to my JBLs, and those are very inefficient, 85 dB per watt, 6 ohm, it's had no issues, zero issues, I had to get near the top, because again, those are monsters, those are, as monstrous as this is, those are more monstrous, and horrifying, and scary, so, still, still recommend slightly more power for those if you're using them on a desk, but for every other speaker on earth, if you want the best for your desk, this is it. My, my roommate, these are my roommates, by the way, and he's a, he's a small freak, so he should be all over this. But he's also a quality freak, so. Bam. Now, the front is rather simple. Oh, God. You got a knob. It's a knob. It knobs. It does knobby things. The newer ones have black plates here instead of these uh, aluminum. And I guess you can go with that. I don't even know why they'd have these because all the Emotiva stuff, see there's my DAC, those are to take off and put rack mount wings. So this is not going to work. Let's move along to the back now. Moving along. It's like the Spaceballs ship. We've got RCA inputs. RCA outputs is just a pass-through. And then you've got speaker outputs, which are really nice five-way bindings. Look at the size of that hole. You've got the power switch, the main power switch. Your AC input, which is just one of these, you know, figure eights. You've got this switch, which decides if you want auto-sensing input to turn on. Off, which is the same as off here. And then on, which is like on, 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 it's on, and then you got a 12 volt trigger, which if you're doing anything pro, which is, is nice. I actually, go if you go back to my Emotiva review, I built a USB 
12 volt. I built a USB 5 volt trigger because triggers should work between 5 and 12. So you could have this turn on automatically with your computer if you set it up that way. Um, one little thing I'll say about the back of this, which is stupid, and Emotiva, I'm surprised at you, is this is left and this is right outputs. Like this is left, this is right, this is left, this is right, this is left, this is right. And that's fine. Except when you're looking at it like this. Because guess what? This is left and this is right. So that means that speaker over there has got to get hooked up to this terminal. And that speaker over there has got to get hooked up to this terminal. And it's a little thing, but it's annoying. The way around that is to ignore the fact that this says left and right and then reverse your inputs. So when you have the RCAs, just reverse them. And then this is left and this is right. The good American way to do things. But uh, yeah, like on my Behringer here, it doesn't say left and right. It says channel one, channel two. You plug channel one in and channel one is whatever you want. And then channel one's output or whatever you want. And then channel two's output. So they should have either done that or just labeled these backwards. Because no one wants to have their speaker wire cross over to go the opposite direction. I had the JBLs with them. It was the stupidest thing ever. Then I realized I should have just reversed the RCAs. And then I could have just made this right and this left. Because again, it doesn't care. Let's turn it on. Is it off? Heavy. Heavy. The whole light, all the lights just blinked. My old four lights. There are four lights just all blinked. Because this thing clicked on. That wouldn't happen with a TM. If you dropped it in a bathtub, it might happen. So it's gone amber. It's gone amber because it's not detecting any signal. And since I'm not going to send it any signal, I'm just going to flip that switch to click. Oh, the relays. I love the sound of relays. Blue. Blue. I hate blue. But Emotiva has been known for their blue. So, they got a pass. So why do you need this amp instead of this amp? Because you're a quality freak. Because you have hard to drive... Uh, I almost gave away the secret. Because you have hard to drive speakers. That's fine. This is a great desk amp for speakers. Now, stop everything you're talking about. Let's start a new review. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> ah. What has just happened is this has now become the best headphone amplifier in the world. I'm not joking either. Uh, guy bought this or he made it. It's poorly labeled and shittily terminated. But I will say I've had this set up for about a couple days now. I've had this wire forever, and I only just stole this from my roommate a week ago. And here's the thing. When you turn the volume knob on an amplifier, here, I'll be looking at it over here if you can see it. See, there's watts. That's watts on top. So this is a two, this spec two is 250 watts per channel, right? Good. But when you start playing music and you start raising the gain, actually you leave these alone and you start raising the preamp gain, it starts playing music, you start being audible at around a tenth of a watt. And then it's, it's like listenable, like completely out of desk fine at one watt. And then it goes to 10, 50, 100, 2, it goes real fast up in wattage. Now headphones, hard to drive headphones, like say uh, these Alpha Primes, need power. So the Centrin amp that I reviewed had 0.7 watts, so it would go all the way to like there. And that's ironic, I'm going to talk about that in a second, what I just saw. So if I plug these in here, and then plug in my source, here, 
here. Now, I'm using my Emotiva DAC as my source, and I'm going to lower it. And this is important, because what I'm showing you here is very good and very dangerous. Because this is not a set of speakers. This is a borrowed set of $1,000 headphones. $1,000 headphones borrowed that I have to return to someone. So what you're seeing here is not for a layman or not for someone who can't understand and respect the risks of what you're doing. Now you can make one of these with a resistor in it that will prevent explosions. But like here, here on my Tascam, that headphone out is just taking the main speaker out to the front and bringing them to the front through a resistor ladder. Then you control the volume and you're, it, it's sort of, the resistors sort of screw with it. They screw with the impedance and everything. They, they, it's bad. That's why most, most, and I'm going to say most amps that have headphone jacks usually suck. So in this case here, what I've just done is I've hooked up the raw 50 watt possible output into a thousand dollar set of alpha primes but but i'm controlling this the line level via a preamp so i have it set at negative 30 db negative 30 db which if you look and this is the ironic thing on the watts chart here at 250 watts at zero negative 30 down from that puts it right between 0.1 watts and one watts so you're looking at probably like half a watt so now if I play, if I, if I, if I can play Sturf, where's my Sturf? Okay, things are playing, and now things are playing on my Emotiva. Two thirds volume there. Max that out. Oh, the KRKs are also outputting from that deck. These are a Patreon giveaway, by the way. Not sure which month. We're nearly at 300, boys. I need like five more sponsors and I could have that Patreon stuff every month. What's happening right now is my Emotiva DAC is outputting a 30 decibel lowered signal into this monstrous amplifier. This monstrous amplifier is outputting two thirds of its power into a quarter inch adapter and that is pushing a set of alpha primes. Marilyn Manson's The Beautiful People. Now, things aren't blowing up because of this limit. This is limited here. If you were to do this, if you were to buy this as a straight headphone amplifier and not even bother with speakers, you would have one of the best headphone amplifiers ever. Now here's my EO9K, which I love. This is better. This sounds better. It's got more separation. It's got endless, endless power. Like endless. If I just started raising this and turn this up, these headphones would be a flame in a heartbeat. So I wouldn't be doing if you have just a computer with like a, a digital volume control on the on your keyboard and you plug into this and then you do this, that's scary as shit. Because at any point Windows might just reset your volume to maximum and then fire. You understand? The risk of, of like fire on your head. Instantly ruined warranties. But if you have a way to control an output volume, whether it's through a resistor, which again I don't prefer, or a preamp, or even I'm considering the little line level controllers that I was talking about. If you can get a high quality one of those, even the Emotivus Control Freak, lower that shit down wrap it in duct tape and hide it in a drawer so that this never gets full signal. I think you could just dedicate this as a headphone amp. Right where I am, 30, is where I've, I've calculated that I could push 
the 500s and the Alpha Primes up to the maximum of this volume knob without risk of blowing anything up. So what is this? What am I reviewing here? Am I reviewing a very expensive speaker amp that's very good? Or am I reviewing a actually moderately priced headphone amplifier that is more powerful than any of your other headphone amplifier ever on earth, ever? I think that's the second one. I like this, I really do, as a speaker amp. It really is good. As a headphone amp, with all this, all that stuff in it, I think that's where its real potential is. Yeah. Sit on that and spin around a little while. Now, I'll try to find a place where you could buy this cable. I mean, people have done this mod. People have modded this inside the unit and plugged it in here. This is fine for me. I'd actually prefer it outside, and even these have the pass-through. Hell, I might even go out and instead of making the wires, I'll just make these for you people, and I don't know how much I'd charge. The soldering in here is probably a pain in the ass, so it'd probably be like 45, 50 bucks per wire, but it would look awesome. It's, yeah, these are, this is, here it is the best headphone amplifier that I've ever reviewed. Two, $200 even, right now, 197.10 for the best headphone amplifier I've ever reviewed? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Now, will this adapter work on an SA50? Yes, it will. But what we're talking about here is cleanliness of the signal. And if you're going to do it, see, on a speaker, you don't notice any little flaws on, like, a digital amplifier because, you know... People argue, oh, they've got $20,000 speaker amplifiers. The air and the shape of the room matter a whole lot when you're talking about speakers. And, you know, the, the .01 doesn't really help much. Honest to God, you don't need it. I'm not, I'm not a big advocate of $20,000 amplifiers. But this, for headphones, that's where all this shit in here that is better than everybody else's shit, that's where it comes in when you could hear every little detail. When Alt-J's blood flood is playing. Oh. Even the Sentrance amp, when I put the Sentrance amp up, or this feel, you could tell there's a limitation to how loud it's going to get, how much power it can give. And absolutely fucking zero headphones on earth need 50 watts per channel. But I could provide it. It's called overhead. Here is 12 pounds of overhead. And hopefully the next headphone gathering we have, I'm going to whip this bitch out. See, now I, I'd, I'd love to use my ODAC. I'd love to use my ODAC into it. But then I'm relying on digital volume controls, and that is scary. That is scary shit. So I either have to have permanently limited RCA inputs or permanently limited stereo powered outputs. Because protection, protection is the, is the word here. Keeping you from blowing shit up is the word. So is it a good speaker amp? Yes. Is it a better headphone amp than speaker amp? Yes. For $200? Go to shit audio and find a $200 headphone amp. And you know how many watts it's going to have? Not much. You want to, oh, you want to do the biggest, baddest headphones, you need to step up into the five, $600 range. But this seems to do that. First of all, China versus America. So respect for shit for making things in America. But. Watts. Watts. Let's just, just pile up my Emotiva headphone sta station now. Emotiva DAC to one Emotiva amp to plug some Emotiva headphones. I'm just kidding, Mr. Speakers. I know who they are. So, yeah. I mean, this is a review of, like, 
Someone said I haven't done enough small amp reviews, and that's because there aren't many small amps that need reviewing, because the SMSLs work great. But now we're talking about a different level of stuff, things, and what this can do for, for shit like that. So just keep that in mind. You know, this is 110, this is now 197. And just, just look at the, just sort of the, if you brought it to a recycling center, think about how much more you'd get for this. So there, that's my review of the Mini X. It's great for speakers, as long as they're not super hard to drive. It, it's, I love it. This configuration is scary good. Scary good. Because it's literally scary. It's like, oh, what if I did this? Ah! Fire! So, until you've done your research and you understand what's happening here and how bad things could get, do not attempt. Research. Attempt. Then attempt. I recommend something that you could have like literally a fixed. It's at negative 30. And here's another risk now, because now I've got the rockets on there as I'm outputting them XLR, and those run about negative 15 to get the volume right about where I want to listen to it. And then if I were to have this plugged in and that, and this came on and the headphones are in and something loud, oh my god. 15 more dB, bad. So, what I'm saying is this is the best ever. Don't do it. You have to be great. Not crazy, you have to understand. You have to understand. That's the important thing. Understanding.